Hi everybody, I'm Phil Fatika. Welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. We have two gentlemen for you today. I think you're going to recognize both of them. And they are sworn to protect and serve you. I'm talking about the gentleman from the Erie County Sheriff's Department. Sitting in the middle is Chief John Loomis, Erie County Sheriff's. Thank you for joining us, John. I'm going to shake your hands. Oh. John, I'm going to reach across and say hi to John Haberski. John is the Chief Deputy of the Erie Sheriff's Department. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Uh, you look resplendent, resplendent today in those uniforms. And the first thing I'd like to ask you is, so many people see you on TV holding somebody by the arm, walking down the hallway in the Erie County Courthouse, into a room, camera stop, there you go. I know you do a whole lot more than that, but let's start with that. What are you doing there? What's going on? John, we'll start with you, because we have John 1 and John 2 here. John, we'll start with you, Chief. Well, I think, uh, Phil, I think by the time we're done here, uh, people will be surprised mm -hmm. how much you exactly do do. what the Sheriff's Office provides and does for them. Yeah. Uh, we have 40 sworn deputies. Mm -hmm. um, we have six cler clerical or eight clerical workers two of which are radio operators that, that man our uh, radio and keep our deputies safe and, and uh, mm -hmm. talk to them throughout the day at their, their different locations. Uh, our clerical uh, employees uh, take care of real estate issues for the county. Um, what do you mean, let's stop right there. What do you mean real estate issues? I, I, I had more, no idea, for, for example. Mortgage you foreclosures. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean, but you have to go survey I, notice? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. That can be a little dicey at times. Let's just hop over to John over here. John, most people are welcoming you with open arms. Come on in, have a cup of, cup of coffee. We'll talk about that mortgage foreclosure. And this is why I'm going to reach in front, and it is the weapon has been emptied. Is this a reason why you carry this? Because of certain situations that may arise. John. Yes, it is. Okay. Jump to the next question, and then we'll come back to the mortgage foreclosure. Have either one of you ever discharged this in the line of duty? No. No, sir. And will you think you ever will discharge it in the line of duty? I would like to think that I would end my career without having to, mm -hmm. but there's always the possibility that I may. John? My true hope is that I can get through this career without ever having to do it. And yet the common thing is through television, the media, movies, that everybody's pulling it out, firing 13 shots and reloading. And that's not even near the truth, is it? Absolutely. No. Absolutely. And yet you have to be trained to use it. Absolutely. Okay, well, we're jumping way ahead. So for right now, let's talk about the mortgage foreclosures. What do you do, John? You, you get in the car, drive to, and what do you do? What do you say to them? Uh, you, go ahead. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. No. Uh, okay. Uh, it starts with a writ, okay? And we have to serve that writ that we're going to foreclose on our property. Okay. And, uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, not everybody is happy to see us. I mean, they're losing their house. It, we can, it's a, an issue that can be very contentious. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, can it be dangerous? Absolutely, you know. And then mm -hmm. uh, at times we have to levy all the property uh, within that home. Uh, that may require us to go back multiple different times to levy the property inside that home, the garage, a barn, anything else. Okay. Now, you strictly operate in Erie County. Correct. But there are times when you would have to go outside of Erie County, such as. How far afield do you go? As far as our authority? Mm -hmm. Our authority? No, as far as like you have to go pick up somebody that's not in Erie County, let's say. We, uh, now if you're talking warrant issues, mm -hmm. we have traveled all over the United States to bring people back Erie County that is are that wanted so? here. Is that so? Yes. And uh, personally, a few years back early in my career, I uh, was involved in an extradition that took us to Puerto Rico. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So, again, I just want to make a point that when you see these gentlemen on TV, it's more than just walking down the hall, holding somebody by the arm and escorting them into the courthouse. It's known as the district justice uh, courtroom there. They do a whole lot more than that. Forty deputies. Well, let me ask the question I think everybody wants to know. How did you get to do this? Do you ever want to be a sheriff? want to be a law enforcement? How did you get here? Actually, I spent my uh, the early part of my career in uh, the Erie County Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked there for 12 years and got to know quite a few uh, deputies that were in the uh, sheriff's office. And uh, 12 Just, years later, uh, an opening came up mm -hmm. and uh, I decided I wanted to uh, 
you know, leave the corrections and see what the other side did. Okay. Now, John, you may, this John may be familiar to you if you go to Harbor Creek because, why is that? <laughs> Uh, I spent eight years as a school resource uh -huh. officer at Harbor Creek, and uh, I truly enjoyed those eight years. Yeah. It was probably the best eight years of my career. I mean, wow. you get to help people. You get to work with kids that uh, have some issues. You can, uh, you know, deal with them. Uh, and, and it's not a punitive issue being a school resource officer. We're there to help. Mm -hmm. We're there to make the school safer for everybody, students, parents teachers, everyone, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes uh, that is misconstrued, you know, by mm -hmm. different groups. So you both had kind of different paths to where you are right now. Yes. Is fair to say that? Yeah, yeah. well, John has uh, Department of Corrections experience also. Also, yeah, okay, okay. Let's go back, a lot of kids want to know, a lot of people want to know, a lot of people majoring in criminal justice now in colleges. Uh, it's a very popular field. Uh, you're living examples of what can happen to people who are, extreme, are successful in their careers. You recommend that to the young people out there, male and female? If, if that is, uh, is the route that they want to pursue mm -hmm. in a career, I urge them to go for it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. John? I would agree with Sheriff uh, Loomis. I, I mean, if you have that passion, that drive, to do something that can be challenging and different, mm -hmm. I would encourage you know any you know young person that may be interested. Okay, it's a great career. And let me add, oh, please. It, it's not for everybody. No, I it thank you. It is not for everybody. Why isn't it for everybody? What what? Because everybody has a different outlook on people and different personalities, and some people just have a different mindset as to what they can do if they were a police officer mm -hmm. or a deputy sheriff. Okay. And it just, you, you, it takes a special person. I know that both of you both work for the public, of course, the people, but also in a sense, the judges are somewhat in, in control of what you're gonna do and be in place and time and you have to and uh, th how does that work out, John? Well, the sheriff's sure. primary duties is to the courts, to, mm -hmm. the, to the court of common pleas, to the, our judges, to uh, criminal uh, proceedings in Erie County. When the judges uh, have to implement punishment for, as, as in sentencings, we have to have that defendant there if they're incarcerated. Um, we have to maintain the peace within the courtrooms during all these proceedings. And we have nine Erie County judges mm -hmm. that uh, some people may or may not realize that we have nine judges. Um, uh, we have to uh, provide security t within the courthouse on a daily basis. We have a, a security transport unit. The, these are the deputies that people encounter when they come in the, the front doors who mm -hmm. are checked for uh, contraband and or weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, the public, can be funny. Some people are all for it and comply and some people you know, they don't, they don't like emptying their pockets, mm -hmm. but these guys, excuse me, these men and women at the doors that work for the sheriff's office mm -hmm. have a job to do on a daily basis. They do it well. Um, we, we've had con some contraband come through that, that was discovered, mm -hmm. and at that time, those people are charged. Sure. I say that as a general rule, I don't find anybody that when you come in the front door of the courthouse, you're, you're scanned. You have to empty your pockets out and they run them through the scanners and you're scanned. And I don't hear a whole lot of complaints about that. I don't hear people saying, oh, no, no. the people that are complaining are the ones that have something perhaps to hide or, 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 or trying to get away with something too. Um, a lot of people watching go, okay, you guys round up the bad guys, you serve uh, mortgage foreclosures, you work for the judges, and I'm driving along on, on East 38th Street and I don't realize that I'm going 55 and all of a sudden the light comes on and you pull me over. Can you guys do that? Can the Erie County sheriffs and the deputies, do you have the authority to conduct the traffic stop? Absolutely. Okay, I'll say that again and you want to look Absolutely. right in that camera right and, there. And keep in mind across the state of Pennsylvania, the sheriffs and deputy sheriffs have full traffic authority okay. to make traffic stops, conduct uh, uh, sobri uh, field sobriety. Okay. Um, 
the, anything that is involved with motor vehicle, we are trained in it and we have the authority to enforce it. Okay, great, great, that, that's nice. A lot of buzzwords around today, or of course, uh, you see a lot of uh, things on a lot of news programs and, and, and other shows where there's a lot of video from the convenience store, um, the bank, or whatever, because uh, it, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's there today. So, John, I'm going to ask you, um, there's a monitor, there's a video monitor in the courthouse. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, the cameras are everywhere. Uh, and my obvious question is, how does that assist you in your job, in, in your, your particular uh, office? Oh, it helps us. Uh, I mean, cameras, although are a proactive, you know, approach, but it helps us track individuals that we know that can be problematic at the courthouse. Okay. And uh, if someone is going to a specific courtroom, we can track that person, uh, kind of observe their behavior by camera, and if there's a problem, respond to that mm -hmm. area and, uh, you know, take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. So they greatly assist us, not only inside the courthouse, but on the outside of the courthouse. Oh, say that again. I a lot of people okay. may not realize on the outside yeah, you're of right the on courthouse. this middle camera okay. right now here. On the outside of the courthouse, the cameras are, uh, we can see things that occur almost in, uh, what is, is it, North and South Park Row mm -hmm. on state. Uh, our cameras are very, very good cameras, and uh, we're often asked by different law enforcement agencies for incidents that occur uh, for a copy of the video. Mm -hmm. so. uh, speaking of which, then, do you provide mutual aid to people? They say, hey, we're short-handed guys, we need you out here immediately. Would that be part of your uh, sphere of influence and responsibility? If we have the personnel available, absolutely. We, su mm -hmm. we supply assistance to any department uh, agency that, that requests it from us. Okay. Uh, if we know in advance if there's some mm -hmm. type of operation going on, we, we supply a few uh, personnel mm -hmm. to add to mm -hmm. uh, their assistance. Okay. John, I'm going to come back. You, you talked about the inside the courthouse and the cameras. What kind of problems do occur in the courthouse? Um, public doesn't hear a whole lot about that, I don't think, but I think there are some that are worth mentioning. Well, many court hearings that occur on a daily basis can be, you know, very, like a tongue at, at the heart. You know, they're very emotional. People are emotional. Mm -hmm. And you never know when someone is sentenced to a significant period of time how they may react, how the family may react. If there's a, a big homicide trial, how the victim's family is going to react during that trial. Mm -hmm. uh, and different people just don't want to respond to, uh, you know, the element of being searched uh, upon entering the courthouse. So, okay. you know. Yeah. And, and Go ahead. if yeah. I may, and no, to, please. to add to that, um, the Chief Haberski spoke about uh, somebody in, in a criminal proceeding. We also have uh, child custody cases going on simultaneous to other criminal proceedings taking place. You have uh, divorce proceedings. There's so many different type of uh, civil and or criminal proceedings taking place simultaneously on a daily basis where emotions are running high. Mm. Sometimes people aren't thinking clearly and sometimes they act out. Mm -hmm. And in the event something like that happens, um, sometimes uh, whatever, if, if it's a child custody case, uh, the uh, Office of Children and Youth would say, contact us, say, the day before and say, hey, this 915 hearing mm -hmm. could be volatile. Mm -hmm. We'll tell our camera uh, uh, detail to keep a close eye on that courtroom okay. and possibly maybe put another deputy, an added deputy into that uh, proceeding. Okay, okay. Let's, let's start with the most known from people seeing you the most often, and that would be you see them walking down the hall and you have an individual in tow, male or female, but there's something that happens before that. Let's walk us through from how does that person get there? Where Do you actually keep them in the courthouse? Is there a place where they stay? Where do they come from? What if the district justice says, hey, this you're dismissed. This is this is done. There's not a shred of evidence here that, that's going to say that Phil did it. Uh, or, Phil, you're going back and talk, run us through that. Well, Start at zero. Phil we, committed we, a crime, we have, maybe. We, have, we, we receive a court schedule every day. Okay. Um, today, we're going to get a schedule of all the court proceedings tomorrow. 
Um, some of those people that are to appear are incarcerated. We transport from the county jail to the courthouse. 18th and Ash. 18th and Ash to the courthouse on a daily basis, uh, two, three, possibly four times a day mm -hmm. uh, to make sure these uh, defendants appear in front of the court in a timely fashion. Uh, a lot of times uh, that what you said, you know, they go in front of the judge and the judge dismisses their case, drops the charges, what have you. Um, some people think that at that point they're permitted to walk out a free person. They are, they are discharged mm -hmm. by the court, but they have to be returned to the jail to be properly discharged, be off of their, uh, uh, their, their head count, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's primarily, primarily jail policy. We can't just let them walk out of the court. Well, first of all, they would walk out, walk out the front door of the courthouse in a green jumpsuit. Yeah. They're going to get stopped real quick. Right. <laughs> so the rule of thumb is in the event, uh, and it happens daily, uh, some of these prisoners come over and go down to central court, which is a preliminary court proceeding, okay. and sometimes bond is set mm -hmm. or reset or the charges are dismissed. Witnesses don't show up things happen, the case falls through, mm -hmm. and the judge releases them from prison. They have to be returned to the Erie County Jail to be discharged. Okay. Um, let's go to you, uh, uh, Chief. The um, procedure then is there's also, a, there's also a holding cell or holding cells in the courthouse? Yes. Why do you have those? Uh, to secure the prisoners that are uh, transported from the Erie County prison to the courthouse okay. and we secure them in a yeah. holding cell. Uh, and last year, 2014, we transported over 5,000 inmates from the jail to the Erie, over 5,000 inmates from the jail to the Erie County Courthouse. Over wow. 5,000. Okay, now, let's, Phil's committed the crime. Everybody says, hey, there's enough evidence here. The trial dates are set. Now, what do you do, do you bring me back so that I'm going to be in the court and you have to be in the courtroom with me for protection from what, I, whatever, what, why are you there in the courtroom? Either one, I don't care. Uh, are you incarcerated? Yeah, yeah, I, the, I, the, you have to go. If we escort you yeah. to that courtroom, we are going to remain by your side. You're the north to my and south magnet. You're sticking to me, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We are going to remain by your side until you're secure. Whether I that, like it or not. Whether you yes. like it or not, until mm -hmm. that court proceeding is over and you're returned and secured in our holding area upstairs in the sheriff's office. Okay. And uh, until your return to the county jail. Yeah. I can tell when we're talking here that both of these gentlemen really love what they do. There's a passion in their voice. Uh, you know, if you go to work and it's work, you go, oh, I don't like this. But I sense that when you go to work, the, the two of these gentlemen, they don't go to work. This is, a, this is something that you've come to love and, and you will finish your career doing this, fair to say? I'm, I'm committing yes. here. Yeah. No. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and I noticed too that, that John said, that he worked with young students at Harbor Creek. And there's more and more of that occurring. People like you are in schools throughout Erie County. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing. They see you not as an enemy. They see you as somebody who can help them. John, why don't you, you had a lot of experience doing that. It takes that certain kind of personality to do that too. Yeah, not everybody is willing to work with youth, but we can't yeah. give up on youth. And I, I think it's critical that you work with them because sometimes they don't have that foundation at home and you can be that extra barrier, you mm -hmm. know, uh, to guide them in the right direction. And I still see kids to this day that, you know, uh, I have ultimate respect for them and they have ultimate respect for me. They've become friends now that they're young adults. That's a really nice thing. We should mention that one of the young men running the cameras here knows you because of his going to school at Harbor Creek. So you're living proof that people like what you do, very yeah. much so. I want to go back uh, to, to the weapon you both carry. Uh, uh, a lot of people come up into the courthouse, get on the elevator, the appropriate elevator, go up to the fourth floor, walk in the, out the door, right there you are. And I want to ask who is then eligible to carry or apply for a license here to carry a concealed weapons permit? Who's eligible? Am I eligible? Absolutely. Uh, okay. Pennsylvania state law mm -hmm. and the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, state law, anyone over the age of 21 
can come down and apply for a license to carry a concealed weapon, mm -hmm. weapons permit mm -hmm. in the state of Pennsylvania, Erie County. Um, they go through a uh, what's called a PICS check, which is Pennsylvania Instant Check System, which mm -hmm. is run through, run by the Pennsylvania State Police out of Harrisburg. Um, if you are not or have not been ever com convicted mm -hmm. of a misdemeanor two or higher, if you have never been, you are eligible to carry a concealed permit. If I have been, I'm not. If you have been, you are not eligible, and that PIC system will indicate to us that you are denied to have a permit. Okay. Um, this, the state law also gives the sheriff the authority to deny or revoke somebody's permit or their license to carry a concealed uh, weapons permit based on their reputation and character. Therefore, if, if, uh, if I get complaints that Phil Fatika back in, back in 2011, you, you know, was arrested four times for public drunkenness mm -hmm. and... Uh, well, it was actually six and, times. And, <laughs> and uh, it, there, there's a course of conduct that, uh, that you keep having contact okay. with police. Mm -hmm. I can I can look at your your uh, file or or your applic your original application because there's questions on there that ask you mm -hmm. if you are a habitual drunkard okay. and or user of alcohol okay. and you say no but yet three years later you've had three DUIs mm -hmm. after that second one or second or third uh, second the second one that's going to be graded as a misdemeanor too which you won't be able to get a permit after that. Okay. But then people, uh, and we've had this, and we've been watching this closely since I've taken office. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, On our applications, people that uh, claim they've never been arrested before. Mm -hmm. But yet, we check their background, we check, we run them through the PICS check, and they've been arrested for uh, possession of a small amount of marijuana. It even asks you on your application, do you use marijuana? Mm -hmm. They put no. Mm -hmm. They put we don't, that I've never uh, used uh, or I've never been arrested. And then we find out that they've had different charges of small amount of marijuana, but it's been pled down and not, Okay. doesn't really indicate that that's what they pled guilty to. Okay. But I can look at that mm -hmm. and say, no. You know, based on your character and reputation, mm -hmm. I feel that you, uh, you, you shouldn't have a permit to carry concealed mm -hmm. and you could be a danger to uh, the community mm -hmm. only because you're a user of marijuana mm -hmm. and you can't prove to me otherwise mm -hmm. that you're not. Uh, you were dishonest. Oh, Reasons yeah. like that. One of the uh, things about that maybe you heard about is that there's a lot of leadership um, organizations here that get people together from some of the colleges and they take them to the various functions of, of the city and the county. Like, what does it mean to go uh, uh, into the courthouse and, and look at a, at a juror, or a courtroom, for example, or a city hall? Look, look at the, the water filtration plant. All those things that people go, yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. But those are important things. But one of the things that most people look forward to is they go, we're going to jail today. And I want to tell you that when you go in there, it ain't Club Med. It's not Club Med. And both of the gentlemen know exactly that. John, you can start with that. What can you expect when you go to jail? What's the first thing that happens? Hey, we got a nice room for you, and here's a diner's card for you. And uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't think uh, TV actually does jail justice. Uh, all your freedom is taken away. Uh, when I talk to youth and I talk to them often, uh, you know, you don't have the freedom to go to the mall. You can't do this. You can't do that. So uh, life is completely changed. I mean, they control your life when you're inside jail. So you eat when they tell you're you told. to eat. You yes. sleep when they. Yes, sir. You pretty much can recreate when they say. Yes. Yeah. When when do I get to like say have any privacy or sense of aloneness? When you uh, Prob when you're when you're discharged and you have uh, yeah. you walk through the confines of your uh, own home, yeah, but yeah. you're not going to get too much of that in jail unless you're in 
confinement okay. by yourself. Uh, I get sick in jail. What happens to me then? They have a medical staff that will treat you, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. But uh, you know, I, I'm not sure about the medical treatment. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, they will take care of you if if you're in desperate medical need. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many people does jail normally have? I mean, there's a component there, and I know it's it's not a long term place, but generally speaking, a round number. There, um, I'm not sure. I, I we, I mean, aside from. Transporting mm -hmm. prisoners. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, we do have your, a lot of contact. Your contact is not that daily with them, yeah. right? Now, yeah. possibly one of my transport uh, security deputies mm -hmm. that go over there every day. They have they have a count board count, yeah. on on the back of the okay. wall. Um, they could probably give you a number. I really wouldn't be comfortable guessing right now. I glad, John. I'm glad you said that. It's it's not what television and the media depicts at all. I mean, it's not just not. You have to go in there to find out. When you hear that iron clank, that's, that's, there's no sound effects. That's the real deal there. And those people are carrying these things, and these have real bullets in them, and, and it's, it's scary. We've got about two minutes left. I'm going to ask you a general question. You can both answer it. You're seeing more crimes committed, less crimes committed, or they're about the same, but somehow they're being reported more. I mean, people are saying, oh, we're living in such dangerous times. Oh, it's, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. Is the media ramping that up? Personal opinion, um, in certain cases, I'd say yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure of the volume, but the way it's being reported mm -hmm. on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes more than once yeah, per day. Per day. Um, mm -hmm. it, people don't feel safe in their own houses. John. I would agree. I would agree that it's about the same. I think the uh, media sometimes tends to sensationalize it, you know, to a certain degree, plus social media. Yeah, that's everywhere. And yeah. Obviously, if you read it online, it's true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's on the internet. It Absolutely. would never lie, would it? Yeah. John Herbersky, he is the chief deputy in the Erie County Sheriff's Department. John Loomis is the Erie County Sheriff. He's the head cook and bottle watcher of the boss, right? <laughs> Right. Yes. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. A lot yeah. of great information thank you, to provide. Thank John, you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Next time you're in the courthouse on official business, not law business, stop in and say hello to these two guys. They're always around somewhere and they'd be glad to talk to you. Thanks for being with us. Take care until next time. I'm Phil Fatika. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.